How's it going guys? Welcome back to West of Loathing. I don't know why I chose to start the episode here. I haven't gone anywhere, I haven't done anything. I meant to I meant to go head back up to the billiard sky first. So now, how is it going? Is it still going good, I hope? Now we're all ready to play some billiards here. I ain't interested in chit chat, fella. Just billiards. Step up or shut up. Challenge him to a game. You pull out your cue and the ghost nods and racks the balls. You're totally new at this, ain't ya? You gotta chalk your cue. You pull out your cue and the ghost nods and racks the balls. He proceeds to crush you still. Something felt wrong, like your cue isn't connecting with the ball properly. The ghost shakes his head at you. You're totally new to this, ain't ya? You gotta chalk your cue. Chalk? Ah, uh, can I borrow yours? Mine's ghost chalk. Wouldn't work. Dang it. Way to overcomplicate things. Oh, I, we, what the hell was that all about? Hmm, there's a trap door in the ceiling over here. Too bad you aren't, like, 11 feet tall. <laughs> I don't even see anything to, pro like, indicate whatsoever that that's there. It just felt like an open area, and I, I just kind of accidentally wandered into it, but I was curious. Usually the game is very effective about... Uh, utilizing the space as much as possible, making sure there's things every possible which place. So it was kind of a little weird. That was a strange one, but I'm glad I found it. Anyways, you should really make sure that never happens to anybody again. Take the chalk. You look at the board and shudder, and then take the chalk. A big stick of blue chalk. Handy if you want to trick someone into thinking a sidewalk is the sky. You might wear down the entire nub. I, I wouldn't re recommend, you know, using all your chalk in one place like that, but it might be worth it for the gag. Depending what shade of blue, maybe they, maybe they would also think it was uh, a little bit of an ocean. Challenge him to a game. You chalk up your cue and the ghost racks the balls. It's a close match. You have to consult the geometry book a few times. Oh, just to work out all the angles. Ah, uh, that's kind of too bad that I found that early and didn't get the proper progression of improving at the game. But that's fine, we got there eventually. I was thinking what the next step was going to be, because I was like guaranteeing that just chalking things up was going to make the difference. You, you got, like, even if you still won or whatever and it wasn't that great of a match, you've still had at least three games at this point, dude. That should be enough to lay your self to rest for eternity. The game comes down to a fight for the eight ball, and you manage to barely squeak out the win. Oh, jeez. When the ghost catches an unlucky, unlucky bounce off the corner of a pocket. Well, shucks. Nice shooting, Tex. He flips you a finger gun salute, winks, and fades into nothingness. I don't know if I would go around throwing around finger guns at people when, like, everyone in here has died at the hands of a gun. A few people might, you know, not take that quite the right way. Might, might upset a few folks. Hooray! Boo Ray? The balls are still now. Grab one. You grab the most appealing ball. The three ball? Why is it so appealing? Because it looks a little bit like boobs? The red paint on the outside of the billiards ball reacts with human blood in a way that doctors will eventually discover is extremely harmful, but which for now is blissfully refreshing. So we just have a lead painted ball. The item goes in your offhand. Regenerate 10 HP per round of combat. From all that sweet, delicious lead you're pumping in there. It's like adamantium for Wolverine, you know? You're just jacking yourself up with that. Incredibly, incredibly useful. Oh, maybe maybe at some point we'll find a ladder or something for that. Now we're really starting to chalk th things up. I was trying to tie in billiards. We're crossing things off the list is what I'm saying. Eleven ghosts are left. Four on the third, first. Oh, right. We only have the three floors. We do know that for certain. I don't feel like I've talked to 11 remaining ghosts, you know? Uh, I kind of want to bomb around and see how many I have seen at this point. Ah, it seems like it's going to be so much work. Ooh, we can play the lullaby here instead. Maybe that'll be passable? We know how to play this one? I didn't realize we were so good at pianos. It's just a little bit of a, a spook factor to it. I, I've, I was just thinking, like... Neither of us is good at piano. We can never play dueling banjos, but apparently at least at least we're good. Is he slowing down? Oh, he's getting a little cheery. He's it, things are becoming a little less uh, painful and annoying to him. Oh, 
Oh, that's wonderful. I thought he was going to get scared from, you know, the spook factor, but no, it was only nice and lovely for him. Well, now, that was nice and soothing. We did a good thing. I thought for sure we were going to pick up his, uh, whatchamacallit, like his conductor stick and use that for something useful, that that would tie into something a little later on. Uh, we've already asked you about that. No, no returning to the piano. We've we've maxed that out now. It would seem. Oh my goodness! I have to go back and read that. Nothing left here but dust and a few loose treble clefs. I, uh, the joke is still good. It's funny. It just uh, I, I I hyped it up there for a second to an extent that maybe didn't equate to the total payoff. Is this the only plant I've seen? I can't think of what sort of plants I need to be killing. You know. This, everything in this room, we just need to burn that room down entirely. <laughs> Hello again, sir, did you find some real tea? Uh, no, but I, I do have a fun looking spot to live. It's got an uh, ocean, oceanfront view, nice luscious backyard. The kitchen's a little small, but I think it makes up for it with a, just a wonderful den space. But no, I'll make tea from your tiny bones. I'll just leave, I'll leave her be. I'll come back when we have uh, something nice to offer. How about that? Guess this must be the kids' room. I wonder what happened to them. You okay, Susie? Oh, geez, I'm sorry. Uh, don't worry about it. Go on ahead and have a look around. I'm gonna hang back for a spell. Oh, that feels sad. Susie, I didn't mean to bum you out. There's not a joke to be had in there. Just genuine sad feelings and character development. Well, we need to balance that out a little bit by getting yelled at by the elevator operator. That seems like that would uh, make me feel better about myself. Did we any anything left to do in this room? Talk to Paul? Oh, oh, the legal fun person. We still, we, um, I thought there was some sort of lawyer or something in here. Objection! Oh, overruled! What's your problem anyways? Ah, uh, it's legal stuff. You wouldn't understand. Uh, wa la di da What? Uh, I can play fun games to learn about the law, right? Well, I might as well read the, the snake oiler. You hide the magazine under a log in the woods. Maybe some child will find it. I feel like that's the same one. Same thing that came up the last time I read one of those. The fun law. Read it. I, I didn't even... I, I, I thought it would just come up naturally that a character would want to see it or whatever. You flip through the book. Unsurprisingly, it's mostly about ways bored children can stay out of their parents' hair for just five damn minutes. It also has a little tag on the spine, indicating it came from a mansion library. The mansion library? Okay, then. But I, I didn't learn... I didn't learn anything fun from this particular law. No gun law yet, just fun time law. Do you want to hear about fun law, perhaps? Well, crud. Maybe we can take it back to the library and trade it for something? A book is a terrible thing to not read. I don't know if we ever actually went into the library. I don't think we did. Let's see what the switch does. Flip it and see. Oh, damn it. <laughs> this doesn't even make sense. The light just blacked out most of this. I... I'm so stupid. That's Daniel Boone and this book one are two that it's like, clearly Boo is hidden inside of all this. How in the sweet lord did I not figure it out for myself? It's a big dictionary on a pedestal. Could come in handy if someone tells you to look something up in your Funkin' Wagnalls. Uh, is that just what they used to, like before the days of Webster? Look something up. What do you want to look up? Boo is my number one thing. You look up boo in the dictionary. Weird. There's an entry for that word, but no definition. It's just a picture of... Oh no. A picture of what? A picture of what? It's a picture of you! <laughs> Got an achievement quaking in your boots. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I, I honestly don't have a clue what else I would look up. What was the funk? Funk and whatever? But if I just look up funk by itself... Funk! To pickle a salad instead of a wheel? It's printed in a book, so it must be true. Oh, does it not matter what, like, that was one particular one. What was the other thing? Funkin' Waddle? It'll just come up with, like, a randomized thing no matter what. A harpsichord instead of a small vehicle. What are all these instead of definitions? I feel like that's not how dictionaries work. What if you look up dictionary in, in the dictionary? Smartass. <laughs> I deserve that. 
What about the whole, like, oh, I looked up idiot in the dictionary and there was a, a picture of you to lengthen both a balloon and a screwdriver. Uh-huh. That doesn't make any kind of sense. But. A rope with a vintage potato. I, I was wondering if you put in dirty words. I'll leave the dictionary for now. Maybe I'll come up with other things to look up. I feel like the boo and the dictionary were too two awesome ones that like I don't know how many unique f jokes are going to come out of that so I found two good ones at least this ghostly librarian is glaring at you as if daring you not to make a noise excuse me but shh I'm sorry I was just shh okay jeez is this good <laughs> I suppose it will do now what was your question I don't remember anymore can you help me with some library stuff doesn't matter, I've decided to just attack you. Oh, well, I, I do I do want to still follow it up. It's weird. I was wondering how you died. Oh, okay, I, I just assumed the one at the bottom was always going to be the one that ends the dialogue. Uh, yeah, I'm curious about that. I'm curious how shooting tied in. I was wondering... Shh, I was wondering how you died, if it's not too personal a question. I was caught in the crossfire in a library shootout. Wow, what happened? A pair of ruffians, ruffians, hard to whisper and formulate these words as if I wasn't struggling with that already. A pair of ruffian, ruffians got into a heated argument over the comparative merits of Anton Chekhov versus Heinrich Avsen, and when they started shooting, I attempted to step in and stop them. I simply won't abide gunfire in my library. It's far too loud. That's your only objection? The noise? Ibsen versus Chekhov, huh? What was their point of contention? I don't recall the particulars. I just remember the Chekhov fan shouting, Remember that gun I showed you in Act 1? Before opening fire, the noise was dreadful. Oh, Chekhov's gun! Uh, I was sitting, I was like, as soon as I read Anton Chekhov, I was like, okay, I know that's a thing. Heinrich Ibsen didn't stand out to me immediately. Chekhov's gun is is this idea in like storytelling maybe it's specifically for screenplays it's was this idea that if you introduce something it has to pay off and I don't know if it's named after Chekhov's gun because uh, it it was introduced and paid off in a good way or if it's an example of something that was not handled well so it's like in the first act of the movie it weirdly shows a character like open a drawer to their desk and you see that there's a gun inside of it and they close the drawer and it never comes up again. It's like, I don't know, maybe it was trying to teach you something about the character, but if it never comes back, it never pays off. Like, if then the character gets attacked in their own home, right, and they grab a baseball bat instead. It's not what you're expecting, it's not what the setup was, the payoff doesn't match up. That's the whole thing with Chekhov's gun. I just can't remember if Chekhov's gun is an example of when it's done well or poorly. But I'm, I'm glad I followed up on that. That's your only objection, the noise? That's quite sufficient. I won't tolerate noise of any stripe, and certainly not gunfire. I'll... Uh, 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 excuse me, I'll, I'll see what I can do. And can I sneak past it all? Ooh, yeah, row upon row of identical-looking books with only numbers on their spines. You have two books you could... Put back, fun law and dueling banjos. They go on different shelves, so you can't do them both at once. Uh, weird that it's something that you have to debate. Fun law, I guess. You find the shelf where fun law belongs and put it back. The next book on the shelf is entitled Gun Law. Oh, so is dueling banjos gonna end up being dueling something else or something else banjos? I was kind of, I was kind of thinking that the law book. The fun law book would in some way be a step to a gun law book, but I stupidly didn't think about the fact that it's literally just one letter off. Which might be even more entertaining, the basics of gun law. This book is an overview of the laws regarding guns, which even at this point in history already don't make any sense. They were just convoluted right from the get-go. I'll definitely give this a shot. <laughs> Funny. And, and and maybe I, it doesn't matter how far deep into any of this I go. It's that eventually there's got there had to be something back here, dude. Did you get crushed under a book? How embarrassing! I was gonna walk straight past you and turn off the light. I wasn't even gonna help, but fine. There's a guy lying here trapped underneath a large book. 
You, uh, you okay under there? Shh! No talking back there! Sorry, sorry, we're on the far side of the library and we're the only ones in here. Jeez. Wait, so can I not help this guy? He's just totally stuck in here because we can't do it quietly. Take a closer look, he's probably fine. It turns out to be a book about geology. It's bound in stone, and it appears that each chapter is devoted to a different type of stone, and is printed on slabs of the stone in question. It isn't going to be easy to move. I'm going to move it. <laughs> you managed to heave the book off the guy. Oh, thanks. I thought I'd never get out from under there. At least now I know all about this particular type of granite described on that one page. And also this made out of and all the other ways that it was related to granite. Wow, this guy's a little bit cross-eyed, but like the outward kind of cross-eyed. Really, really the funnier kind of cross-eyed. I always like when I had like a toy, like a Furby or something that broke and then its eyes crisscrossed. There was like, I had like a McDonald's toy Furby that you could do that on purpose. You like squeezed the bottom of its feet or head, top of its head or something and its eyes would cross. It was awesome. I, that was way more fun than the real Furby. The real Furby was weird. How do you get trapped like that in the first place? Well, I work the info desk in the visitor's center, so on my breaks, I like to research different kinds of info. You know, just in case anyone asks. I guess you never know when someone might ask you about rocks? Exactly! Oh man, I'm late getting back. Thanks again. Feel free to stop by my counter if you have any questions. I will do that. That sounds like a good, a good proper next task to set up for ourselves. Something nice, nice and light. Relatively simple. Uh, do I do I immediately? Now, nah, well, we gotta read up on the gun law first. Then we can decide if we want to put other things back. You learn basically everything there is to know about gun law. Now you can be the prosecuting attorney and defense counsel, in addition to judge, jury, and executioner. We do it all by the book. You know enough about gun laws to know that they who have the guns make the laws. Fair enough. And extra pistol damage. So even more benefit to be gained from that. After that, you put the back back on it, book back on its shelf. Time to dispense some justice. Justice from the end of a barrel, hey? Uh, is there anything else? Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, what else could we possibly... Can we put the gun... We can't put the gun law book back. Can we put the stone book back? I don't know if we're actually carrying that one. You find the shelf where dueling banjos belongs and put it back. The previous book on the shelf is entitled Duel Law, which seems to be about the legal issues surrounding dueling. Never know when that might come in handy. Ooh, maybe I have to challenge someone to a duel at some point. Or maybe it'll just make me know more about gun law. Nah, it said I knew everything there was to know. This thick legal tome explains all the laws about dueling with things other than banjos. Everything but everything Banjos had its own book. Everything else, one book all to itself. Banjos, there's a lot of, it's the rules and regulations behind Banjo dueling. Ugh, oh, don't even get me started. And that's part of what uh, Susie was saying way back when, is that she was pretty sure it was illegal to do it. What was her reasoning? Like, not on two pianos or not? There was something about it like that. She thought it was illegal. It probably, it probably was outlined in that book. Duly noted. Ah, it's great stuff. You have no idea where to even start. So I guess, I guess we do need to find reference points for ourselves. Dual law, though. You've learned all of the laws pertaining to dueling. It turns out when two guys want to murder each other in a fair and reasonable manner, things get legal tricky. Legally tricky. Dual law. You are reasonably well informed about the specific subset of gun law pertaining to duels and duel adjacent activities. And then you put it back on the shelf. Cool. I wonder, and five extra pistol damage, which for me is crazy important, but I wonder if that would have been necessary uh, for the, the law nut lady. What was your whole thing? What do, you, what do you actually want? I'm looking for a book on a specific top topic. I'm looking for a precise definition of a word. I'm looking for some of that delicious paste. The paste is for book repairs, not for eating. Ah, uh, please? No! Ah, shucks. It did look like mighty fine paste, didn't it? Did I say something about I hate whispering? I should have selected that option. Because as you likely noticed, I, I did give up on doing that myself in any way. I'm looking for a specific topic. 
I'm afraid our card catalog is out being reorganized. Someone sorted all the cards by call number instead of by title or author, which made it quite useless. You'll have to search the stacks manually. How do I get started? If you can find a book on a similar topic to what you're looking for, its call number will direct you to the other books on that topic. Well, thanks. It does kind of add a layer of logic to the weirdness of the organization of all of this. Otherwise, it seemed like just a bit of a shot in the dark, didn't it? Precise definition? There's a dictionary over there. Regrettably, it's a few years out of date, so it doesn't have technocracy, secular humanism, or brunch yet. But it should be sufficient for your purposes. Great, thanks. I am going to look up brunch just to see if looking up any of those uh, brings up anything. The word doesn't appear to be in the dictionary. Alright, I'm going to assume that's what comes up when you search any of those other words as well. What a, what a horrible world the West was back in the day. Not having brunch invented yet. Just awful. Um, I guess I did actually ask her everything. Was there something about whispering? I've decided I hate whispering. Oh, that's just how you initiate fighting. Um, I don't know how to help you, library lady. I guess maybe there's going to be another book that I have to bring back here at some point, but right now, it seems like there's just nothing I can do about it. And I'm sorry, you're just going to be stuck there. Uh, maybe I just need to fight the librarian at some point. What's your problem? Legal stuff? In fact, I think you'll find... I'm quite conversant in the finer points of our justice system, particularly as it pertains to guns and gun-related activity. Horse radish, you're all trousers and no briefs. Oh yeah? Just try me, smart lady. Fine. Obviously you aren't gonna leave me alone, so just ask your questions. Um, <clears throat> I'm the grimy slinger, speaking for the record. State your name, occupation, and cause of death. Felicity Wainwright, defense attorney. We she didn't even give us like a test thing this time to be like, well, do you actually? She just took us at a at a face value there. Maybe we're just that good at bluffing. You think of that? Felicity Wainwright, defense attorney, lost a court approved trial by combat. What? Trial by combat has been outlawed for like 15 years. Oh, so did we have to learn what killed her through gun law, and now we can help her resolve it by learning about dual law? You do understand that ghosts don't visually age as time passes, right? Oh, right. So, your client called for trial by combat, which meant you and the prosecutor had to face off in a duel? Sucks that the lawyers had to fight. That's correct. And you lost? She squints at you. Are you acting dumb to try and throw me off guard? I withdraw the question. Why are you stuck as a ghost? Because although trial by combat was already well out of fashion at the time, it was still a valid legal recourse. I should have been prepared for the possibility, but I wasn't. My lack of training resulted in an innocent man being executed for murder. Whew, how was he executed? Hanging, I assume. Obviously, I wasn't around to see it. Maybe he should have just been shot? Would have been kind of like an irony, provide a little bit of closure. So to release you, you, uh, I need to prove that the loss wasn't your fault? Oh, the trial duel was completely fair and above board. There is no chance of there having been foul play on the prosecutor's part. My loss was my own. Then I'd have to prove your client was actually guilty, and therefore your feelings of responsibility are misplaced? The look she gives you is hard and cold. Look, you think you know a thing or two about the law? How about you tell me the first rule of being a defense attorney? I mean, uh, I didn't actually memorize it. The game did for me, so specific questions of any sort are going to be out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> Don't make fun of the judge's beard. Don't refer to his gavel as a weird little hammer. Don't accidentally call him mom. That's... that's a big one. The weird hammer, I would compliment it. I like the hammer. Some people... some people prefer that size of hammer, you know? And the judge's beard, very envious of that, as you can see, so don't accidentally call him mom. Very embarrassing. You have to trust and believe in your client. If you don't believe your client is innocent, you'll never convince anyone else he is either. So if I want to convince you he was guilty, you'll have an uphill fight, fella. You're essentially playing prosecutor here. 
All right, tell me about the case. Uh, no further questions. I'll come back later. My defendant was Matthew Guilty McCready, <laughs> accused of the murder of Vic Vic Timsbury. It was something. Like, he was he was the victor. His his nickname becomes less applicable than this guy's did at noon because uh, they had a high noon duel obviously June 18th 1878 in Reno I have some questions go ahead your client was actually named guilty come on what was the cause of death this was at noon precisely I'll ask about guilty first names don't mean anything I once had a client named Ike Aldeguy Ike Elite guy I, I, I kill the guy, I, I kill the guy, I, I kill the guy. It's hard to run it together in a way that makes it sound like I killed a guy, but that's what they're going for there. And he was totally innocent. For someone's actual legal name, sure, but nicknames are usually given with some sort of basis. Well, I mean, our formal name is a nickname that somehow in some way got formalized, the Grimy Slinger, we weren't born with that. Maybe I was. It's been like 30 hours of this game. At some point, maybe I did make the claim we were born with it. I uh, no need to re-retcon any of that at this stage. You've never met a really tall guy named Tiny or a fat guy called Slim. Arguably, the nickname Guilty would reinforce my client's innocence. I hope that was the stance you took. You'd be a great lawyer. That's absolutely, totally absurd. But I'll let it rest for now. What was the cause of death? Timsbury was shot through the heart with a 45 caliber revolver. Edmund, did McCready own such a gun? Yes, he was holding it at the time. And subsequent examinations showed that it had been recently fired. Using that old, like, 17th, 18th century ballistics? Are you messing with me? Any further questions? Yeah, yeah, one more. This was at noon precisely? Yes. That was confirmed by witnesses. Also, McCready owned a fancy pocket watch that chimed on the hours. A chiming pocket watch? That is quite fancy, I would say. There were witnesses? About half a dozen of them. I'm pretty sure there's something you aren't telling me. I'm not obligated to play my hand face up, Mr. Prosecutor. Okay, then. Hang on a second. Shot with a pistol in front of witnesses at exactly noon. Was this a duel? So you can add 2 plus 2 after all. Well done. Well, as luck would have it, I've just recently read a whole book about dual law. What? Why? No reason. I just happened across it in the library and thought it might be interesting. It's true, I wasn't prompted whatsoever. We hadn't even had this conversation that would have necessitated it. I took it upon myself because I wanted to be a better law man. And I wanted to shoot the shit out of people, so you know, that helps. You've read an entire code of law you found at random just for the heck of it. A oh, yup. <laughs> Let me just do a quick review. A duel is legal provided it's between exactly two people at a specific prearranged time and place using the same or at least essentially similar weapons and they have to either face each other down and quick draw at the appointed, mo appointed moment or do the 10 paces turn and fire routine. Is that right? That's the gist of it, yes. So I guess let's start with you telling me the facts of the case, and I'll interrupt you rudely if I have any questions. Alright, but if you push me on trivial nonsense, I'll get mad, and you'll have to start over. I'll try not to, but I will promise nothing. This is probably going to be long, because I'm going to have all these questions. I'll come back later. Ah, uh, on second thought, let's just fight. Uh, it seems fair. Go ahead. McCready and Timsbury got into an argument in a saloon on the evening of June 17th. Apparently, Timsbury accused McCready of cheating at poker. I have some questions. <laughs> Shoot. What was the name of the saloon? What day of the week was this? Tell me more about the arguments. Sure, why the heck not? There isn't much to tell. The other players in the game had already folded their hands in that round, so they weren't paying very close attention. All we know is that Timsbury suddenly accused McCready of being a dirty, cheating varmint. And McCready said Timsbury was just sore because he'd been losing all night. Did McCready have a history of cheating? He'd been accused of it once or twice before, but Reno is a gambling town and he hung out in the rough part of it. Getting accused of cheating by a sore loser when you're on a lucky streak is par for the course. But McCready had a history of cheating. 
it would be irrelevant because the reason for the duel is immaterial to the legality of the duel itself. Motive isn't an issue here. Now we really are getting into the nitty gritty. But remember how I warned you about taking me off with stupid digressions? This is an excellent example. Objection! This is extremely relevant. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna push her a little further just to see how pissy she gets. Ah, oh, what the? This is extremely relevant. If McCready, <laughs> wait, did it just play a little sound effect and stuff as if it was like out of Phoenix Wright? That's hilarious. And the, like the, with the response and everything. If McCready was a habitual cheater, it's likely he would have cheated in the duel as well. And somehow you're going to prove to me that McCready was a habitual poker cheat 17 years after the fact? How exactly do you intend to accomplish that, Mr. Prosecutor? Even if you did somehow pull that off, it would be circumstantial evidence at best. You'd have to prove he cheated in the duel itself, in front of witnesses. What form do you imagine this cheating took, pray tell? Uh, mirrors? We're done here. Get out. She shoves you out of the gallery and slams the door. Rats. I kind of knew I was pushing things there a little bit, and I also felt like that the episode was kind of reaching a little bit of a conclusion of its own. So I just wanted to let that ride out, uh, put a bow on things, and next time we can come back to it with a, a, a sounder set of legal questions, things that are less likely to irritate, and try and get down to the bottom of this cold, cold dead case. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again soon.